I want to drink the blood, but I don't know how. So I am just getting myself ready and I'm gonna go and read for the last half hour that my favorite coffee shop is open. I'm gonna get myself maybe a salted caramel cappuccino, sit there and try to finish my life as a white trash zombie. But I wanted to give you guys a beautiful view of my majestic Thanos. Oh, he's a boo, a boo bear. I love you. <laughs> he's so sweet. And then I have Jupiter just right there. Hello everyone, hello my moons. Welcome to my first video back to YouTube after I don't even know how long. I, I'm really good at being consistent with things. However, today I, I'm kind of thinking um, I'm going to introduce a new style of video, but I feel like every time I, I put videos out, that's the thing. So I think it's about time that I just let you guys know, which I think most of you already know, that I have ADHD, so having one hobby, one like, one love, one opportunity is like impossible for me. So we're just going to kind of go with the flow with um, my ever-changing things. I mean, I live in a place where the seasons are ever-changing. I mean, I have ever-changing seasons within me. I am a female. I, the moon phases, there's just cycles through everything. So we're just going to go with the flow and allow all of my phases to come out so anyway hello i am misty moonbeam if you're new here uh please consider hitting the like and subscribe things like you know i'm supposed to say that in these videos um make sure to check it out i've been filming a lot of stuff um over the whole the all of autumn the whole fall <laughs> i've been i've been filming a lot and i'm like yeah i'm gonna gonna do a new YouTube video, gonna do a new YouTube video, and I never end up actually putting it all together, so I decided to kind of request for some assistance and uh, see if we can actually just get this started. I would like to talk about my top two favorite um, books that I've read throughout the spooky season. Kind of just like not go in depth about them. I'm not really at that point yet. I feel like I'm one of those reviewers that is just like, oh, I loved it because it made me feel a thing, but I don't know how to explain the thing. So that's kind of what I want to talk about is just like, I like these books because I liked them and then maybe give a little bit of a summary why. I have a fun, a couple fun props too that I want to <laughs> utilize in this video so we've got brains if that gives you a little bit of an idea maybe what one of the books was about brains. and then i also have like this blood bag Drink if blood. that gives you an idea of maybe what one of the books was about Drink so blood. i'm gonna have fun with doing this and see what we can make with the video this is a starting point so judge as much as you'd like just a reminder that if you don't like what i post you don't have to be here and if you like what i post again please consider hitting the subscribe button a good way to get my content in a more regular manner is to follow me on snapchat here's my snap code somewhere around here snap code exists <laughs> and just make sure to uh, come and check me out on snapchat i do post daily but i will say like it is possible that there's some days that i don't post because sometimes mental health is not there but on a general basis i post every day and even on my bad health mental health days i tend to share a little bit as well which i feel like a lot of people don't do but i i'm one of those creators that believes that it is important to show all sides of your life if you're going to be a content creator because otherwise you're portraying this like perfect life and people are kind of like expecting that their life can also be that perfect if they did the things you did but unfortunately that's just not the reality of things um so yeah let's get into it 
So before I mention the books that I appreciated the most, I'll give you guys a bit of an overview of the books that I have read throughout the last little bit or listened to because I've also done audiobooks. I've been listening to the Charlie Davidson series which um is like she's the grim reaper and she has this like weird relationship with the son of satan uh so it's still within the spooky season really love the series but it's not necessarily my favorite i've also been reading a lot of goosebumps with um, a buddy of mine we've been doing buddy reads um of the goosebumps series and uh this is a, the next one that we're gonna jump into it is the Horrorland one which is the horror at chiller house which is i think the last of the Horrorland series so we're gonna be diving into that super quick reads i love goosebumps for that um, I've also read some Tales of the Crypt, you know, some good, like, young <laughs> books that are very nostalgic. I also read two Scooby-Doo books, so one was, like, The Haunted House, and then it was, like, The Haunted Mask or something like that. I think I have them, so just give me one second, I'll go get them. Uh, so yeah, I read, I, I need to go find the second one. I have the volume one and volume three of Tales of the Crypt and I actually really like these and they also have a really great series. I think it's on Shudder. If you haven't watched it, it's really good. And it's, the the series is a lot less uh, juvenile than like the books are. The books are easily read by like teens and stuff, but the series itself is a little bit more gory. Super good though. I love these for a good Halloween read. And super nostalgic to me, I've got my Scooby-Doo ones, which, like I said, Haunted... Oh, so Masked Magician and Haunted Castle. Super easy, quick reads with pictures. So, of course, that's great. I'm a huge Scooby-Doo fan, so this is just a given. So I've read those books. I tried reading House of Ash, I think it's called as well. I'm pointing over there because I think it's on my pile over there. I didn't get super far in it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that I was more focused on these two books that I'm going to be talking about. What else? Have, I feel like I've read a lot more than that. Uh, I read Book of Night by Holly Black. I think I can put a picture of it here as well. Give me a sec. I'm going to open my Goodreads and that's going to help us figure out what I've read. I'll be back. Speaking of Goodreads, I have actually been kind of keeping it updated a little bit about all my reading. So I will have that linked in the, I guess it's called the description for YouTube. So I'm going to have that linked in there as well as my other social media. But like I said, the one I spend the most time on is Snapchat. I basically completely forgot <laughs> about Twitter since it's become X. Like, it's not even that I'm, like, really that against it changing its name. It's just that the icon not being the same on my on my phone has, like, removed it from my memory. And I, like, basically don't spend any time on it. I would like to start again. But anyway, I'm gonna think I'm just going to focus more on, like, YouTube, Snapchat. I do post sometimes on Instagram. It's rare, but it does happen. And then I'm also going to start util utilizing my Facebook a little bit more. And I know that that's very controversial, but in the area I live, Facebook is like the only social media that everybody uses. So I've had to start using it more. So I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm just going to give in and go where the content seekers are in a sense. So anyway, here are the books. Um, this gives me, I've got my iPad here with my Goodreads so I can let you guys know like which books I read in the last couple months. Oh, I just finished the audiobook of Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. I, love, I loved it so much. The only thing I wish it was is that it was more of an A, I think it's first person where it's like you're in the person's head instead of like being this omni uh, omnipotent person that just sees everything. I prefer being in the person's head in the books that I read. So that's the only negative thing I have about that one. But it was so good. It's like a kind of like a treasure hunt, scavenger hunt type thing with a little bit of a clue vibe and a little bit of a House of Usher vibe, you know, like it was really good. And it has an Edgar Allan Poe twist to it. And I don't know, it was really good. I really liked it. I don't have a physical physical copy and I hope to get a physical copy at some point of it. Another book that I really liked and gave five stars to was Sleeping Giants, which is a sci-fi kind of like first contact with like aliens-ish, not really, but like also an ancient civilization type of scenario. And it is so good. And I found out that it is a series, so I'm going to get the other ones as well. And I'm going to go through those. Like I said, I've also been going through the Charlie Davidson series, which is really good by Dorinda Jones. 
Another good book that was interesting to read in September was Lake Silence. That was really cool as well. Uh, a lot of really interesting characters that I f wish could just have their own side stories <laughs> because the types of characters and like the elementals and like there's a lot of interesting uh, fantastical characters in here and it's also spooky. I really liked it and I want more so I might actually have to either reread or look into the series because here it says number one and then the other is number six so I don't know what that means I'm gonna have to like see what I <laughs> what I actually read I also read Fever Dream which was really weird and I guess it's normal that I'm still a little bit confused as to what was happening I didn't give it a very good um review but not because I didn't like it because <laughs> I have I have ADHD right so it's hard to kind of keep my attention with things and the whole fever dream aspect is supposed to be kind of all over the place and I'm sure a lot of people really like it but I had a really hard time really really grasping the concept of it but I'm sure it's good for some people the goosebump books I did end up reading were don't scream why I quit zombie school which is super fitting because zombies I'm, I mean we're not, we're not talking about zombies I mean Brains. No, just kidding. Obviously, people probably are catching the fact that if I'm talking about brains, I'm talking about zombies. I read "Is Everyone Hanging Out with Me" um, by uh, Mindy Kaling. I feel like that book was literally like just if I was sitting at a coffee shop with a friend that was oversharing their life. So it was good. I enjoyed it, but it I didn't get much out of it. But I did go through the entire thing and enjoy it still. I also read All Systems Red uh, by Martha Wells, which I actually really liked, but I've been hearing a lot of mixed reviews about the series, so I'm very scared to go further than the first book. So I might just kind of like leave it for now and maybe dive into it some other time. Nothing But Black and Teeth was actually pretty good. I listened to that one as an audiobook, and it was kind of like creepy weird. Um, I also listened to An Anonymous Girl, that one was pretty cool too. Um, if somebody is reading this one though, I would recommend reading it closer to Christmas because the time and setting in the book is Christmas. And so um, I was, I loved the concept and the vibe of it. And it was oddly relatable because the main character was a makeup artist and I'm not going to get into it, but I used to be a makeup artist as well. And so it was just like, it was really interesting concept. It has a therapist bit to it and a weird like human testing type of thing very interesting and very weird but yes if you're gonna be diving into it i recommend it closer to christmas i also did the grown up which was really good by jillian flynn this is like a short uh novella super good legends and lattes oh my god my soul and then the second book is coming out actually november 7th i think is the date so bookshops and bone dust i think it's called i'm gonna be diving right into that the moment i can i finished the series of the lunar chronicles as well by listening to fairest and winter loved that series it's a ya series and i'm trying to get out of the young adult reading phase because I don't relate to younger characters anymore, but this one is a retelling of a lot of uh, fairy tales all kind of coming together, like Cinderella and uh, Little Red Riding Hood and stuff like that. And I'm kind of a sucker for some retellings, so I really enjoyed the series. Plus, it involves like cyborgs and like future sci-fi stuff, and I really liked it. So it was like, it was like fantasy, fairy tale, and sci-fi all into one, and I, I really liked it. And my favorite book of the year so far was The Humans and that is by Matt Haig and this is the perfect little like get into what I want to talk about for this entire video by saying this so Matt Haig is my new favorite author I have discovered him this year and I am hopefully going to read every single one of his books um, I also just found out that he's the writer of A Boy Called Christmas the one that's now a movie as well I know I'm talking about Christmas and that's like exactly what I don't want to be doing right now but it's still like important to mention because Matt Haig is a great author and um like there's a lot of things that I know about that I didn't realize were books before or I realized that they were all written by the same person etc so my favorite book this year that I've read was The Humans. It was just so good. It's like about a, I wanna say alien that comes from somewhere else that kind of takes over a prof professor's body and like kind of like tries to take over his life because he has a mission and I don't wanna say too much, but then after like obviously living the human experience sometimes makes you change and then it's a very like awesome like mental health neurodivergent book and like that's what I love about 
Matt Haig is he writes for neurodivergent type people. The chapters are all short. So for people with ADHD, <laughs> he's like, it's perfect. I can keep, it keeps my attention. It feels like I'm watching a movie the way that like the scenes change. Every chapter is a scene. And I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I love Matt Haig. I'm obsessed right now. And the reason why I'm saying that is that one of my two favorite books from this spooky season is also a Matt Hag book. It is not The Humans. Um, I would rate The Humans uh, above this one, but the this one was also very good, but totally different vibe. <laughs> um, and that is The Radleys by Matt Hag. Um, I love these covers. So the Humans uh, version I read was the blue book with a dog on it, and I really like their covers, and I am going to probably buy all of his books at one point but I have to slowly get into that because I am not rich and I do not have the money to afford books so these are actually from the library this one's considered horror from my library and at first when I was reading it I was like oh my god this is not horror this is this is so tame and so chill and then the further you go in you you actually get a little bit more gore and um yeah so basically the Radleys is a story about a family of vampires that live in a very urban settings and they're trying to be abstainers I guess is a way to say it so they're not like partaking in their vampire needs and trying to live as normal humans um and then obviously in order for it to be a book and a plot um something happens and then uh they are met with their past and all sorts of like family drama and like what do they do about it it is really good I really liked it and again like I said his chapters are super short like this is a full chapter right here and then you got a, a new chapter right here two pages so it's really good for people who have shorter attention spans I like to do atmospheric things when I'm reading and so when I was obsessed with my Radley's book I was like oh cool I could probably do a cool Radley's book video and drink blood we've got blood <laughs> we got blood delicious blood i don't know how this works do you i'm guessing it's going to be with this with this thingy because this thingy stops and lets stuff pour out this is going to be messy i guess that's okay um i want to drink the blood but i don't know how i think i have to come i'm gonna go get some scissors Bear back. Hello, I'm a Radley and I need to drink blood to survive. <laughs> That's I'm not really a Radley's thing because Radley's like tried to be abstainers, but anyway, read the book. Um I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna try to drink some of it. This is pure sugar. This is I think, anyway. What even is in here? I should probably read. Where's the oh no, did I throw it? Oh no, okay. Yeah, blood syrup. Is it, is it made of real blood? Um, sugar, glucose, syrup, sugar. Water, citric acid, malic acid, sodium cit citrate, artificial flavor, potassium sorbate. Potassium! It's healthy! Woo! <laughs> Caramel. Allura red. I'm guessing Allura red is what makes it the color. And this is good until November 8th, 2024. So I will be a happy vampire forever. So it's probably gonna go in the garbage once I'm done with this. Scissors. Wish me luck. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Like, am I supposed to cut the other one too? I don't know. There's like a clip here. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, oh, it's going to come out. It's, this is going to work. So let's see. Maybe not. I mean, blood is a very thick substance. <laughs> nah. I don't know, the vampire life might not be for me. Because, like, if I had to wait this long to get my juice out of a freaking juice box, I'd freak out. 
it's gotta be it. I think maybe I'm supposed to cut this side too. But if I do that, like, is it not just gonna pour out everywhere? You know what I mean? But I feel like maybe it'll make it so that I can drink it like a juice box. Because right now, I cannot. But I also feel like it's because this thing is like... Mm. Uh. Mm. It's actually like really freaking... Tastes like strawberries. Am I Marceline from freaking... You know Marceline in Adventure Time, where she has to just basically drink the things with the color red as a vampire? Um, eels coming. <laughs> it's oddly delicious, though. What I think this would be really good for is if you had ice cream. And then you just kind of like poured it on top of the ice cream. I think it would be like really good actually. I might have to do that. So I'm going to like just remove this and store it for later. But oddly delicious. Like a little bit sour. I like strawberry. I will have to say that most Matt Haig books touches on themes of mental health in many aspects from what I'm gathering so far. Oftentimes, he talks about suicide. So trigger warning, but also don't worry because it's not like in a negative way. Sure, the character is feeling feelings, but I feel like to me that is relatable and important to put in in books sometimes because relatable things make it so that people like me will just fall in love with the stories he he explains it in a sense that it's like always there's always like a hopeful side to things so like yes the character went through emotions and then um after that realized that he prefers to be alive kind of thing you know so like it's a trigger warning if you're triggered by just like the topic itself, but it's also a safe place to be um, diving into, in my opinion. So anyway, the Radley's very good. Um, as I said, I don't, I'm not one that really knows how to really d deep dive into books and stuff. I'm going to learn that as I go with making these videos. But if you are neurodivert, if you are, <laughs> if you are neurodivergent. Please give Matt Haig a try. I r definitely recommend The Humans as possibly your first book to try of his. Um, this one was just perfect timing because I mean, I was looking for something spooky and I am trying to read through Matt Haig books. So it was like perfect timing for this one. And I did actually really like it. Um, if vampires are more your thing, check it out. But I think that if you're going to start with a Matt Hag book, you should either do The Midnight Library, which I do have as well. Do I have it close by? Yes, I do. So try The Midnight Library, which I will be... I, I've only read <laughs> up until the 000 spot. And so if you know, you know. Again, topics of the S word in here. The zero 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 has to do with the S word, and that's how far I've made it. But I wanted to keep this book for um, December. Um, I kind of started organizing my TBR a little bit, so I stopped reading it until then, and I will pick it back up. But I think if you're going to be reading a Matt Hag book, go with the Midnight Library or the Humans. I get that I got that one from the library. I purchased this one. I'm going to purchase the humans and I'm going to purchase this one as well so that I have them because I probably will reread them. And that's one thing I love about Matt Haig. He writes books that I feel are relatable and the characters with the whole neurodivergent aspect of things really speak to me. And it's kind of like those types of characters that you want to go and hang out with again sometime, you know, I don't I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about Matt Haig, but I love him. 
<laughs> I love him. And I also found out that this book is going to be a movie in 2024 is what the internet is telling me. So it is British. Um, so these, <laughs> these vampires are British. So I think it's going to be a really fun, like British comedy. And if you've ever watched what we do in the shadows, I think it's on Disney plus. It's not the same thing, not the same thing, but as a companion series, <laughs> that's what I was doing. I was watching like companion series and things with the books to kind of give myself the vibe. And so I started watching that one again. I used to watch it a few years back, so I'm not caught up on the full series of, of what we do in the shadows. But when I was reading this and I just finished recently, I was watching a lot of what we do in the shadows and it kind of just helped me put myself in that British vampire in a urban modern setting. So it was perfect companion, I would say. So anyway, loved this, loved it. I guess that's all I have to really say about it for now. Um, definitely check out Matt Hag if you are a neuro neurodivergent human being and you're looking for something different, um, but a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different, he touches a lot of different subgenres. So like vampires, urban settings, and then the other one's like aliens and math maybe is a good way to put it. The other one is a uh, female perspective with Midnight Library. This is male, pers well, family perspective. There's male perspective in the humans. There's different perspectives. I don't know. Love Matt Hag. Fully recommend. If you're going to start with a Matt Hag book and it's not spooky season, <laughs> check out the humans. Trust me. And also give it some time. It is a different way of writing and a different way of reading. So read it slowly if you have to. Just trust me. You need to make it from point A to point B with this book because these books in general because it's a it's a whole adventure and yeah. Anyway, I could say so much more. Maybe I'll just do a Matt Hag deep dive at some point. Maybe that'll be my first one because it would make sense to me and my content. So, yeah. Anyway, second book the second book that I really appreciated this spooky season is My Life as a White Trash Zombie. I picked up this book, first of all, for two reasons. One, it was $3. Two, the cover. I, I love it. This is a mass market book as well. So the fact that this cover looks really nice, I would wonder what the like hardcover copies and stuff look like. But I didn't expect to like this. I really didn't. I wanted to buy it for a decoration pretty much for my apartment, but I ended up like really liking it. And I also found out it's a series, so I might have to check out the two other books. This is kind of one of those like cozy reads without it being too cozy in a sense, but like I would put Legends and Lattes in a cozy read or my dog is snoring. <laughs> So I would put this in a cozy reads thing because cozy reads, in my opinion, is like a low stakes plot in a sense where not much happens, um, but there's enough story to kind of keep it going. Um, it's kind of like a day to day type of situation. So that kind of is how I characterize a cozy read. It's very like not stressful to read in a sense. So I really like that for for this book. Um, how can I explain what it is? Um, so white trash, <laughs> I don't know if I need to explain, you know, but um, let's think like, you know, trailer parks and drugs and too much alcohol and stuff like that, right? So this is a character who lives that lifestyle and I guess got a little too carried away and ended up overdosing. And I, I'm not spoiling anything because this is the first couple pages. <laughs> and I think it also explains it in the back here too. So she ends up overdosing and then wakes up in the hospital and is really confused about what the frick happened because she remembers being in this like crazy accident, but also is completely fine. No scratches on her body type of thing. And then she ends up receiving this box with this ominous letter saying hey you have this job now which you're going to be working as a uh, body carrier I, I don't know what they're called that take bodies from scenes and brings them to the morgue 
and here are also these weird coffee looking drinks that you now have to drink every two days and then she's just like okay well this is a second chance at life i've never had a job i guess i'm gonna go and try this out so let's get into it Brains. candy bonbon gummy candy bonbon gummer spooky treats so what am i eating here sugar woo corn syrup water citric acid malic acid artificial flavor potassium again this is healthy woo uh, allura red oh there's allura red in here too caramel the brain itself is made out of sugar water gelatin artificial flavor allura red tartrazine titanium dioxide sounds very toxic brains So, the girl in my book's name is Angel. An angel that eats brains. 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 All right, so let's have our daily dose of brains, brains so that we stop decaying and smelling like dead corpse. Let's do this. My dog, everyone. It smells delicious. Ah, came fresh from the morgue. Poor guy. Car accident. <sighs> Same flavor as the blood. Um, okay. Damn, that's delicious. It's actually like the right texture of gummy as well. I'm gonna have a sugar high now. Holy F. <laughs> Woo! So it's kind of her journey into waking up with these instructions and then carrying out day-to-day -day life with those instructions while she slowly realizes that she has a craving for brains. And she's working in a morgue. So, like, that's the premise. I guess the the direction that this book goes i did not expect to enjoy this book as much as i have but i get myself lost in this and then i also ended up kind of getting into this like weird like zombie um enjoyment phase where i was watching i watched zom one that 100 on netflix i was reading the goosebump zombie books i think one was called why i quit zombie school i think it is some Resident Evil uh, games and things have been in my life while I was doing this. I've been, so I kind of like doing that with my reading is I like to, if I'm reading something, I'd like to um, kind of keep the content and the things that I'm doing around me or games that I'm playing kind of fit the vibe so that everything that I'm doing kind of just, it creates an atmosphere in my brain and in my environment that makes it so that i enjoy things even more so if i'm doing that with a book then i know that i'm thoroughly enjoying the book because i'm like i'm making the book exist in my day-to-day -day life if that makes sense so i've enjoyed this enough to be uh kind of obsessed with zombies enjoyed this enough to be kind of obsessed with vampires so my spooky season has been very zombie and vampire driven <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this book. I don't think I'd be giving it five stars because it's not necessarily a five star book, but I would definitely be giving it a four star. And I I think I'm talking about it as, so this one I gave five star and this one maybe four stars. I'm talking about these two because I've enjoyed reading them the most. And then they kind of, like I said, gave me that vibe of wanting to like make my life reflect what I'm reading when I was reading these two. So to me, that is what, tells me I've been appreciating and enjoying what I'm reading. So these two are my favorite. That's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in this video. All right, so I'm just coming back from 
three hours of trick-or-treating so pardon the like lack of lip and everything's a little bit off but I was making a joke with one of the kids and I was like I'm just gonna go trick-or-treat for a free book in the uh, tiny libraries totally not expecting anything would actually be in there other than just the regular books but there was actually a bunch there's three um blind date with a book options blind date with a book for halloween in the tiny library and i was absolutely so stoked so i did grab myself one um blind date with a book for halloween adult fiction classic horror released in 1818 so I, i'm not very good at knowing exactly when things come out but like i was thinking maybe like dracula something like that so let's let's see what's up <laughs> Okay, so not exactly Dracula, but another great monster, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley. I'm actually almost more excited that it's this because I actually started listening to the Dracula um, audiobook recently, so I'm already kind of reading it. So this is something that I haven't even started reading, and I didn't read it in high school. I know some people people have, but. I'm extremely curious. So maybe I'll read the first chapter tonight because it is a blind date with a book. So like might as well um, read it on Halloween to to kind of fit the uh, the whole situation. But I'm probably just going to go through like one chapter because I do have other books I want to read. But I do want to read one chapter and see how I feel from there. So we'll see. Maybe I'll update when I have an update. But I figured I'm dressed up as a witch today. For Halloween, I got my, my witch cat here, <laughs> but I also got like a witch on my shirt and everything. Anyway, I'm dressed up as like a, a modern witch situation. And I figure since I'm already dressed up, I might as well talk about my TBR for uh, November, which I know it's not Halloween, but I still feel like November is in the like spooky seasons. I mean, my sister's putting up her Christmas tree tomorrow, so we're very different. <laughs> my sister and I, but I love her to death. It is still going to be spooky season for me. I'm going to be reading some witchy uh, books. Some bo My cat is going crazy right now. She needs some cuddles. Come here. Um, so I'm going to be reading some witchy books for the month of November. I only gave myself three on my TBR because I'm trying to, I, want, I would like to like stick to my TBR and actually like finish all three books, you know, instead of giving myself a TBR that is like too long, just give myself a shorter one and then if other books happen to go into it throughout the month then so be it but my goal is to finish these three books so my tbr for the month of november first book is in the company of witches i've heard a lot of really good things about this one um short synopsis i think it it's like in a airbnb thing there's a murder mystery type aspect to it there's witches i honestly i'm not really good at giving my cat's just going nuts i'm <laughs> not really good at giving short synopsis but that's kind of the gist of it i heard it's like one of those cozy um cozy reads i'm kind of really falling in love with that, that genre so excited to check this out the next one that i want to read is garden spells which is from what i hear is practical magic 2.0 is what one of the book tours that i watch calls it i think i think her name is like M emily fox anyway she super highly recommends this book and i tend to enjoy the books that she recommends so i'm going to check it out i'm almost like 100 percent sure i'm going to like this it's also apparently considered a like cozy fantasy read so garden spells is by Sarah Addison Allen. So Garden Spells. And then, yes, the third one is The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. Um, and then this one here is like kind of what the title says. There's a breakup that happens and then she might accidentally have cursed her ex. And I think that that's kind of like hilarious in its sense. So my cat is climbing on me now. <laughs> Those are my three books that I would like to read for the... <laughs> my cat. <laughs> for the month of November. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me for a unraveling of my plundering that I have done earlier in the tiny libraries. 
excited to check this out and the three books that I want to read for the month of November. So yes, thank you. Have yourself a happy Halloween if you're watching this in the future. <laughs> but also thank you for watching and hit the subscribe button. Thanks, ciao. This is gonna be messy. Bye. Drink blood.